Well, look at you. How are you? Good to see you. Why are we? Oh my gosh, it's finally happening. I know. So I've had my students be featured on P Valley. I've had students featured on Usher's tour. I have uh, taught from Zola, uh, Taylor Page. I've been in the industry a really long time, so not only am I booked to do certain things like that, but my students are also doing amazing things. But you started out as just a dancer yourself. I started back in Kansas when I was in college. My friends were working at like a local strip club. I would do my homework in the VIP section. I was like, oh my God, you guys are amazing. So eventually I ran on stage and jumped on the pole and almost died because I didn't know the pole spun. So I was just hanging on for dear life and the DJ was like, get this mother off the stage, get him off the stage. And I was like, okay, I'm coming back for y'all because y'all not gonna do me like that. And then I just got better and better and went to my first pole studio in Bakersfield. And then like I was teaching girls at 19 years old, started teaching classes in LA at 20, and then now I'm 29 and I'm an internationally recognized pole dancer. I loved teaching and I loved being able to do something that not a lot of people did was teach strippers, real strippers. I wasn't doing like fake exotic style, like no, I'm really at the strip club, I'm really analyzing what strippers have to do in order to make money, in order to crowd, you know, entertain the crowd, you know, so I just did a little differently. <laughs> Okay, here's one of my dancers tonight. Let's take her. What up, JB? Hi. Hello. Get it, bitch. So I know. Thank you, baby. You know. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's nice back here. Yes. Do you mind if the cameras are turned, or do you guys want to get in camera? Okay. I just don't want to go. Right. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Are you dancing tonight too? Yeah, everybody yeah, here is dancing. Everyone's dancing. I think that one was good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna Wait, and so there's there's an audition oh thing too, right? Like I saw your post and it's Yeah, we have six people auditioning. Over 80 people applied. I'm doing multiple rounds every week. So to navigate that entire list, I've been blocking out six to eight people to come and audition. And so you're also doing an open call for new people, right? Exactly, but the goal with that is to make sure that these dancers know what they're stepping into. This is not like, you know, you just come and dance and it's just you hope and pray. Like you have to come with that talent because we're in West Hollywood. We are the entertainment capital of the world. So it's gonna inspire them to get their skill set better. Not just to stay at a certain level and be okay with that. It's like, I see them, that could be me. I'm gonna work diligently to audition and make the core team. And also too, I just want a Space where dancers that are dancing take pride in the space that they're in. You know, like mm -hmm. I want them to be uh, uh, just, I want them to be inspired by the people that they're working with. That's about curation and making sure that the people that I'm hiring are individuals and they're talented and they do what the fuck they need to do. And they're hustlers. On top of all that, that's they make the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's another thing too is that. This is yes. from the strip club environment. Make your money. Go and hustle. Go and talk to customers. Rub a, you know, rub somebody's shoulders. Get your bag. Get your hundred slip to you. You know, this is bigger than just go-go dancing in West Hollywood. It's like, right. So Part of their job is bottle service, too? It depends on the club. There's some clubs that don't serve alcohol, so you're doing just VIP dances. But in terms of my club and clubs that have alcohol, you're selling champagne VIP experiences. So you're maximizing your income. And the club makes money from all that, from the VIP room rental to the bottle sale. It's all part of the responsibility of the stripper, too. Yes. You have to keep the lights on in the club, you know? You can come in here and make all the money on stage, but the club doesn't make money from you making money on the stage. They're going to find ways to make money, whether it's from your house fee, whether it's from your dances, whether it's from your VIP bottle sales. It all has to come back so the club makes money. So it's like, even if you love the act of pole dancing itself, there's a lot more that comes into being a stripper. And that's why people get confused. They see dancers on Instagram and they see me and I'm like, this is a real life job. Like you have to treat this like a business. You have to look good, feel good and be strategic. You know, it's not just being on the pole. And the people who have that mindset in the strip game end up getting hurt the most because they're just like, I want to perform. And it's like, yes, you can perform and you can be the best version of yourself, but there's only certain clubs that allow you to do that. And you have to be at the top of your game because nine times out of ten you're spending most of your night talking to customers um full led screen with whatever you want to put on there lighting our dj is going to be right here and they're going to have their setup is that hard to do okay yeah of course yeah, let's go. oh my god you got it oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly so that's the hook i will be dancing but i won't be like 
on the rotation as much. Like if I feel a vibe, I'll dance. But the most important thing is I have to be a boss. I have to lead a team of people. I have to make sure everything's okay. The customers are good. So I'm not like fully dancer. I'm like, ha. So I'll have my little outfit on, like, you know, my business casual outfit. It's and cute. then I'll have my dancer outfit I'll switch out into. And I might just be boss in heels all night. One second, one of my uh, amateurs is calling me. Hi, how are you? Yeah, what, what time are you thinking? Uh, I'm, I'm literally about to just, can I do my hair there? Yes, baby, we have a whole band and everything. And like, okay, just, well then, I can just do my hair there. So this is where I'm gonna have my VIP client. Oh, who's, who's, do you have anyone you, you can say? He is a former athlete. He's oh. Like six foot fucking seven. Love. And we'll have him in the nest right here. So this is where the VIPs come. Yeah, so usually when they have celebrities or celebrity guests here, they'll be right up here because they have this is nice. everything. You know, they can see from top to bottom, you know, and totally. have this, this special moment and then they have their own VIP restroom up here. Hi! <laughs> How are you? Hi. Welcome. You like it. Like, wow, I have no words. I'm like shaking, so I'm so excited. This Beautiful. Is it. Thank you. Oh, it's so nice. Okay, come on, come upstairs. Let's go. Let's go see. Hi, I'm Matt. Hi. I yeah. I, uh, no, no. Hi, What's your name? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You want to touch the stage, you're more than welcome to. So okay. you get a feel out before it gets popping because there is a hoop. There's a pole, so if you're more than welcome to fill that out. Wait, I have a question. I want to be like, I like to be dressed. Like, I like to be like in my outfit, be sickening, walking yeah. around. Is that okay if I get dressed right now? Of course. Okay, period. Oh my god, the minute I saw you come in with your fur boots, I was like, I need to talk with her. Thank you. I appreciate you. I I love those shoes. I feel like when I come to these places, I want to like dress up, look the part too. So you were saying that you dance at Mickey's. I do, yeah. I dance at Mickey's on Sundays and sometimes Saturdays. It's fun. So just for people that are watching that don't know Mickey's is a gay bar. Right. It is a gay bar, but they do feature some even cisgender women, but um, they're trying to get all bodies inside the club. It's nice. I like it there. My series is it's called Our Queer Life, so it's all about the queer community. Right. So are you, are you, can, I, can we talk about that? Yeah, I'm trans. I'm trans. I'm trans post-op. I, um, I came out when I was like 14 and it was like very simple for me I'm very blessed to have that reaction from my family and everyone and then I moved to LA kind of got open arms and I was undercover I didn't tell anyone my tea and just because I felt safer doing that did the other girls know that you were trans or not yeah I would share that with some of the girls who I liked and Trusted. yeah kikied with because there's not really clubs w that trans girls can openly go to, huh? No, there's not. I, I feel like this is kind of the first uh, club that's for, for real, for real. Which is so fascinating to me because I feel like there's such demand for trans girls. Right, uh, there is. And I feel like more so, I think, for even more marginalized trans people, we I want to see more Hispanic trans dancers, more black trans dancers on the stage, not just white trans people. So that's even more hard to find in LA. I have heard like from some trans dancers in other states that like the clubs that are that they're allowed to dance at tend to be sketchier and dicier right. and dicier people to come in and stuff. Right. So it's like I'm so happy to see a place where everyone is accepted and no mm -hmm. one's going to be weird about it. It's nice. Mm -hmm. So I have heard lately that a lot of strippers that I know are saying that like mm -hmm. Way, they're getting way less money than they used to get lately. Right. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, it's not as popping in LA. Mm -hmm. And maybe it is not so popping in other places too like it used to be. We're leading into a recession. Laws are changing. You know, the dollars change. So much is changing. But that's the name of the game. Sex workers have always had to adapt. I remember when Backpage, you know, was eliminated. And now that strippers have to be employees in California, so much has changed. But the demand will always be there for entertainment. Is that stressful? Um... Yeah, it is, but I try not to think about it like that because somebody's making money. I feel like I make more money at cis clubs than I do at gay clubs. Are you thinking about going back to cis clubs for that reason? No, because I feel like at cis clubs it's more like, I, I don't like the whole giving dances part. I'm very much not the type of person to be intimate with random strangers, and I, I just want to prevent that 
awkward situation. I hate going up and talking to people and being like, do you wanna get a dance? And I do like to talk to everyone, but I don't like it to be about the whole money thing. And I feel like people come in assist clubs and they know right away that you're gonna come over and ask them for a dance. Here, it would be so much easier to be like, hey, what's going on? Like, blah, 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 blah. Your night is amazing. My night's amazing. Oh, like, did you know? You could see me in the private room. Wait, and so you're not a dancer, right? I'm not. You're the bartender? Bartender slash waitress, slash waitress, bottle service girl. There we go. And you always work in West Hollywood? I do. I work for Rocco's and I work for Heart. Which I love because I would think it'd be most mainly gay guys that would be the, the those jobs. <laughs> no, we actually throw um, here at Heart, we throw a straight event too. So it's just kind of like worldwide here. You want to get on the pole ever? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't think the polls for me though. I think the whole like customer service, bartending, bottle service thing is more my, you know, more my thing. Do you make more money doing that or do the dancers make more money? I think it depends on the night. It could be dancers might make more money than us one night and then we might make more money than the dancers. It's just like, it just depends on the night, who's here. I'm trying to sell all the or bottle service or have you know, customers be here. Wait, how does that work? So people are paying for the, a, uh -huh. a, the booth? Yes. Yeah. And that so comes to, with a bottle or something? Yes, exactly. And right now we have half off bottle service. So I have, I know for sure I have four people coming to buy bottles. Um, but that's what I have confirmed. So I think more people at the door may choose. So. How much is it? Like, are you allowed to pay? So it varies. It, like I said, the lowest bottle is like 350 And that gets you this so too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get mixers, the bottle. And then um, it's half off tonight, so it'll come out 175 plus tax after tip. It'll be like 200 to change. Is there anybody that's doing what you're doing right now other than you? No, there isn't. How did you invent this job for yourself? I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to be the best version of myself. I wanted to be the face of pole dancing. I love it. It's so like inspiring. Oh my God, this no, it's really that's I just wanted it, you know, I, that's what I wanted for myself. You made a position for yourself. Exactly. And then the whole point was just to inspire those around me. You know, there's not a lot of people who do what I do because it's not accepted. It's not welcomed. You know, I am a gay black male in an industry that is designed for cis gendered women. Right. Period. Um, which I love that for them. I love seeing women make money that I love that. That's why I started to help teach because I love seeing women prosper, period. And to help in any way that I can, because at the end of the day, I'm still a man so I know what men like because I am a man it doesn't matter my sexual orientation I know what's visually stimulating and I know how to seduce and how to manipulate the situation so you're benefiting from it especially in the strip club world yeah because that's what I was gonna ask is like mm -hmm. there's not a really high demand for gay strippers huh not at all you can't even name five why is that because they don't know where to go they don't know you have to make your own lane I made my own lane I wasn't trying to find a place to fit me in. I would make, I would reach out. I have my skills right. I would make my space. I would say, I can bring money to your club. I can do this. I can do that. And I prove them right every time. Hello, everybody. Hello. We're fucking here. We made it. Um, welcome to the first set of Pole Masters Playhouse. Like an all gender all right. <laughs> um, so I just want to have a little quick meeting. Um, just so we're all on the same page about what's expected for tonight. Just remember that this is more so like a strip club night and not like a go-go night. So just re you know, have dancer etiquette. Um, my strippers know what that means. Um, if not, ask one of the OGs to kind of break that down for you. Just be mindful of, you know, customer space. Make sure if you're getting rained on, you don't jump on somebody else's bag. You know what I'm saying? Kind of just be mindful of the space that you're in um, and just be respectful to everybody. Any questions for me at all? How you feeling? Okay. How you feeling, bitch? It's your motherfucking night. It's right. I'm just so thankful, nice really and I just know I'm just like this is just the beginning. Like I hope y'all understand this. Like this is gonna be so much bigger. I thought I could never work in West Hollywood after Blow closed because there was no space for us. Now you have a full club. Right now it's gonna be a night. It's gonna turn into a week. And it's gonna turn into my own club. Bring back a couple meal. Don't got time to wait on money, armor, trouble, flatten wheels. Niggas hated plastic paper, Dixie, they was never real. If you win it and your people losing, they get in their feels. Told my shorty, never wear them clothes, the crib, you wear them heels. Drop it low for me, then slow it down. I was just approached just now and he was asking about if this is a transgender bar. And I basically said, no, it's kind of more an all genders body yeah. club. He was like, oh, well, I really like transgenders. And what I was saying earlier was like, 
I just feel like when you do staple it as a trans, all gender, queer night, you do get a certain clientele that comes in and maybe so not. You're fine, you're fine. You're it's not, not always like the best, but sometimes it is. You never know. They're like they're like chasers. Right. It's giving chaser energy. And how do you feel? Like how does that make you feel? I never really liked chasers when I heard them. But it is something that you deal with in your community, you know? But uh and I feel like it's best to try and we a little bag from them if you can using your beautiful sexual trans power but it also is just exhausting you know do you feel like that when a guy like hits on you or are you like do you only like me because I'm trans right I do think that especially in LA you get more of that type of energy I don't necessarily get that <laughs> I don't necessarily get that energy when I'm not in LA uh, like in San Francisco it's it's so much different She's like, oh, no one saw that yes <laughs> but um is it hard for like is it hard to figure out who you want to date then because like um, i just stay celibate and i've been celibate for a long time because of you stay celibate because of that reason because you don't you want someone just like using you because right. of your transness and i think that happens a lot in la or people are like dating you and talking to you and all that and then they say at the end they're like oh well i don't know if i feel comfortable dating a trans woman it's like well what have you been doing this whole time you're weird I don't, it's a waste of my time. Do you want to be with, with somebody though? Like, do you want to end I up? Do. I do. That is my dream. I kind of don't even want to do this. I want to be like a housewife. I know that's so stupid. Like, Why is that stupid? But I do want to just like have a family and like have hobbies and like clean and cook. I'm just that person in general. Of course. Body. Of course. So I don't know. Whenever they come around, I guess. What's next for you? Next for me, I can't really say now. Everybody just has to keep watching and just enjoy the journey. Hi, I'm Paul Master. Welcome to Paul Master's Playhouse. And all genders get Polish Alianza. You're achieving greatness every day. And, and I know you're, I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll finish the interview because I, I know you're gonna do your thing. Tuned. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, baby. I appreciate you. This is good. You did great. You did great. Oh my gosh. I can't oh. wait. I can't all wait. Right. Okay, let's go do our thing. Yes. Let's do the work.